Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. It's Monday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm your host, Chris Blackstock, coming for you from Los Angeles, California. And today we've got Bobby Rivers with us. Hey, Bobby, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Good, man. Really excited to have you today. I know we're doing some drawing and painting. Um, welcome, yeah. everybody, in chat. Got uh, Looks like Wade is helping us out today. Hey, Wade. Got Ferry Otomo, Sean Kosel, uh, Angela Caba. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Obviously, this never works unless we have you guys watching and participating. So thanks for coming by. Um, just want to remind everybody that if you're watching on YouTube, come on over to uh, Behance.net slash Adobe Live. Uh, that way you guys can talk with us, ask Bobby any questions you have, and just uh, hang out with us here because this is where we're talking. This is where we're hanging out. So yeah, super excited, man. Um, can you just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, show some of your work and just uh, let us know what you're doing today? Yeah, man. Uh, my name is Bobby Rivers from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, I live in South Lake Tahoe now. Um, this is my, can you see my screen? Oh yeah. This is my Behance profile, a uh, bunch of different projects on here. Today we're gonna be doing a beer can label that will also be used for some other things. This is uh, an example of a beer can label. Here you now, can are they are they in the, the beer? Look at that. It's they are. That's the luscious. idea, kind of. These are the hop skulls. This is our logo, yes. and they're kind of making the beer in the tub. This is a little little shadzi over here chewing on a. Is that a, a, a cicada? cicada? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was last year. Was the year of the cicada back on the East Coast. So Ugh. threw that in there. But yeah, you can see here turns into t-shirts cans all kinds of fun stuff awesome um this is a mural i just did at the brewery um oh, nice girl picking some chanterelles mushrooms. and this was uh this was a digital right there's the digital yeah this is a digital so yeah. i i sketched it digitally and then turned it into a mural afterwards which was yeah a first for me but it was really uh convenient honestly so much easier and faster that way did you do, uh, was it projector based or did you do freehand? Freehand, like, so you can, if you really look closely, it's the face is not quite spot on. You can see a lot of like different differences. In okay. But, yeah, uh, no, cool. Getting the sizing cool. right and everything was, you know, it was fun. This is a t shirt we just did. This is going to be very similar to what we're going to do today. We're going to take this character and kind of just develop it a little more. Awesome. Um, but yeah. And then here's my website. Very exciting. But yeah. Well, cool. You know, I actually forgot forgot to say uh, in the morning intro is that if you guys missed the last set of challenges, um, check out the second week. We're going to be doing uh, replays of the Photo Daily Shop, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Voodoo Val. Um, it's every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. So tune in, challenge yourself. Totally forgot about that. Please, Bobby, continue on. Yeah, so that's about it. Um, today yeah, we're gonna let, do, what, what's uh, yeah, let's, what are we gonna do today? Today we're gonna do um, a beer can, like I said. Uh, the, so you, when I start, I you draw in the on paper. Um, these are some preliminary sketches. I usually start just to get a get an idea for the shape of everything, and then I draw with pencil first, and awesome. then. Uh, use microns to ink it. Um, there, here's a little um, quick uh, video of that process. Maybe, maybe not. Um, this is the drawing. Oh my God, you're so fast. Yeah, I'm pretty fast. Oh. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's amazing. But that's the pencil part. Just a little, uh, what are you going to call that? Um, yeah, a little, little prelim sketch. Yeah. Final pencils. Mm-hmm. 
so it's, yeah this is a uh, it's kind of like a little he's got a guitar kind of like little metal themed uh design that we're gonna do um oh man miss the microns yeah so much fun yeah i love microns so um we're gonna be doing a lot of drawing uh on the computer but uh sometimes i'll do the entire drawing on paper and then uh kind of just take a picture with my phone yeah and then take it into illustrator and uh live trace it vectorize it which uh some of my professors told me was cheating growing up but whatever um, it, yeah they're old school man <laughs> they used to tell me they're like you uh you're making coloring books and i'm like look this is my style it's yeah like a silk oh, screen man. digital style and they're like yeah you're not gonna this is not they gonna hate work. it they're like you, you, can't need, do you that. need to learn how to paint i was yeah. like okay yeah, like so. you can't do that. I'm like, well, I just did. So yeah, you get, break, <laughs> you get to break the rules. It's okay. How do I get rid of this? Um, so yeah, cool. We're gonna. This is awesome. So, get rid of this. So uh, the beer can is about usually it's like six by ten. We it's a thirty two ounce can. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna double that size here today. Um, okay, cool. So we're going to 22.063 for the bleed on the can. And that is by 12.063. All right. Actually, what was it? Let's redo that. I wasn't paying attention. Is that right? Yeah. And then 400. Okay, good resolution. Cool. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to um, bring in the drawing, which I already, you know, emailed to myself earlier. Um, there we go. Can I move these little windows? Yeah. Um, so duplicate this onto the image we just made. Mm -hmm. um, you transform. Let's get this guy. About here, put it right in the middle. Um, I move this over here. So I'm going to turn down the opacity on this. So I'm going to start tracing this, um, like that image I showed earlier with the floral bones. I'm going to kind of turn this into that same idea here today. Right on. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll just start drawing. So do you kind of start out with like the base skeleton and then kind of wrap details oh, yeah. me, over that? Let me show you something pretty cool. Uh, where's my doc? I, I moved it. Paco made fun of me for having it on the left. Um, <laughs> so this is one of the most helpful tools for drawing skeletons because I draw a lot of skeletons and yes. this guy is freaking awesome. That is awesome. So that's how yeah can been. you tell us where you got this what it's called essential skeleton i don't i just like looked it up i'm assuming it's for like doctors and stuff to look at bones or something i don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh yeah so that's that yeah. that's pretty cool so yep fairy let's... says work smart not hard yeah i totally agree yeah I mean... the longer you're in a profession the longer you realize like oh i don't have to do everything from scratch to be yeah, considered exactly. a great artist or yeah get a it job be, done it'd be cool to have like your own skeleton to like be able to look at but this is a lot yeah cheaper i wish and... i had a photographic memory and i could just yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> but i had a uh, i had a teacher in um, art school that uh, my anatomy teacher and he could draw the skeleton with both of his hands at the same time what uh and he'd do it in about three minutes four minutes <laughs> that's like... insane yeah with both hands there yeah because no because you know, it's just it's mirrored right there's no yeah. so you just yeah. go and do the whole thing i was just like yeah, kind of like uh, here kind of like this guy is pretty uh pretty symmetric that's the t-shirt you know yeah. what i mean yeah but uh all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna do the beer so his head is open and it's kind of like a little bowl and the the beer is kind of spilling out um the brewery I work for, Kennett Brewing Company on the East Coast, uh, Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Um, the main beer or the one of the most popular beers is called Head Skull Mind Beer. So this is kind of like taking that idea and uh, turning it into an image. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's awesome. So here's the beer spilling out of his head. So we're gonna, that's only in pencil right now. So I'm just gonna start drawing. But yeah, I'm doing this uh, in a different, I'm gonna separate all the layers. That way I can color them and paint, paint them later. Mm -hmm. um, you know, separately. And, and this is like a, a completely opaque brush, right? There's no, the pressure sensitivity oh, yeah. is just the size, right? Um, I don't know. This is a pretty basic brush. I Yeah, it's just the round brush, right? Yeah. Round? yeah totally. The smoothing's yep. on to 33%. And then um, okay. I have the, the weight, whatever that's called, this guy right here, I think. Right? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, it's not on. Is it? Yeah, it's on. So I have that on, um, the sensitivity. I like, it's like more like a brush, you know what I mean? When you're like, a, yeah. like an actual paintbrush, I like that a lot. Um, yeah. It's funny because this is, uh, I made a lot of um, poster art uh, albums. Uh, nice. Digital, and also coming from a very like traditional background and I did a lot of uh, ink. Yeah. And micron, I use microns a bunch. This is exactly... Yeah, I, I checked. Doing. I creeped on your uh, Instagram. We have a pretty similar uh, looks like technique, I guess. And, you know, you know the way. Yeah, we... like I've been I've been moving away. I've been doing more painterly stuff these days. But this, if my go to, I always love that kind of like uh, silk screen print. Oh yeah, you know, it's like okay, you got your black line, and then you're gonna do your fill colors. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how. And I then do maybe it. maybe we'll do like a shadow color, or maybe. Oh know, yeah, but... that's uh, that's what exactly what we're gonna be doing. <laughs> Yeah, very like comic book, you know. Yeah, uh, anime I grew up breakdown. Pretty heavily, heavily influenced by comic books growing up. Yeah. Um, freaking Calvin and Hobbes, mm -hmm. you know, Far Side stuff like that. Oh my god, um, he's Far Side was one of the best. Oh man, Gary Larson's a genius. Dude, just the one-offs, like you can't. Yeah, so single impressive. frame, just so funny, dude. So much in one little strip, you're just like. Mm -hmm. what? I, I love the characters yeah but yeah definitely uh grew up rolling a lot of like 90s skateboard uh you know just looking through ccs magazine and copying mm -hmm. everything i saw oh yeah but yeah so we got some beer here um let's get some suds going on these are my this is my favorite part to draw the suds yeah, been a lot of times studying so go ahead. sorry <laughs> no go ahead I'm, I'm cutting you off go ahead uh i just spent a lot of time you know looking at beer and trying to make it look real the past couple of years. are you a, are you a beer guy or i was not so much anymore but yeah yeah but i enjoy a, a good sour from time to time all right all right yeah i've definitely had the uh the like 10 year ipa phase yeah i think i'm phased out of it. yeah i'm phased out too i'm like i can't it's so better now <laughs> and they're like they're so like unfiltered the well we don't really do that but uh the unfiltered ones are like geez i feel like yeah. i just like it's so full afterwards like, all right yeah oh yeah that's the thing i'm like i i want to like casually drink throughout yeah. the day it's like two IPAs in. I'm like, oh, oh man, yeah. Hangover. All right, time to go I'm to like, bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Holy moly. So that's the general gist of the um, the beer. We'll add a lot more splashes and fun stuff later. But um, so I'm going to start doing the head, the skull. So this is the um, the hop skull. These are the hop leaves. That's mm -hmm. our logo and character. Um. This guy's, uh, he's called The Fool. It's from, um, he used to have a little jester hat, but I kind of got tired of drawing that. Um, yeah. But from the uh, Kennet in England, along the Kennet River, there was this town and they would have this like huge, uh, they had a brewery as well. And they would have this huge um, festival every year and elect a, a town fool which was like, it sounds bad, but I think it was like a good thing. But this is kind of, he's based off of that character. Oh, nice. The original. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool idea. And I think it's actually, I think you're right, kind of getting rid of, rid of the, the obvious design choices, right? Kind of 
yeah in the end will adds more dimension to the character you know definitely and, and you yeah. know people love to hear that stupid little story yeah. <laughs> at the brewery that's maybe the hat will come back who knows? it'll come back one. maybe the Isn't anniversary it? edition yeah definitely We've, yeah i think it's this it'll be seven years this year oh wow yeah so um how did you get involved with the brewery or what's, you know, what's that relationship? Um, this, they're, um, my like best friends from high school, um, parents and they're like basically like my second family. And, uh, Crazy. yeah, they did, um, Mark, the owner or the, the brewer, um, Mark and Jossie is the couple. And, um, he just got into brewing and then decided to open a brewery. And uh, That's awesome. been going ever since. It's very cool. Yeah, my uh, my uncle, who's gosh, what, I think he's sixty now. Jeez, but he just bought he just bought a bar. Nice. Uh, That's <laughs> yeah, awesome. he's super stoked. Sixty. Retired yeah, that's and, awesome. He's like, yeah, he I retired. Know what, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, he gave he got really into beer, like craft beer, uh, maybe five ten years ago, and nice. everywhere he traveled he would he had like a list of places he had to go you know yeah. wherever in the world you know to go taste craft beer that's and, awesome uh his local he lives in uh, lodi which is up north um uh inland from san francisco bay area by okay. like hour and a half inland nice. uh, it's become like a big wine wine spot but okay. his local watering hole and was they were selling it and him and his buddy were like all right Dude, that's, that's like the, that's like such a dream that's so awesome dude. yeah i know i was like oh man that's pretty cool so nice so yeah I'm just throwing the the inside of the uh the head now with the leaves yeah and i mean you've obviously drawn this character a million times yeah yeah so, so you kind of already have this idea of you know yeah the ins and outs and what you can what has to be there and what you can kind of mess with Mm -hmm. I've so this is the first drawing I've done I've been toying with the idea of like being able to see inside of the eye sockets and the head and stuff like that instead of just keeping it like a just a black eye like a skull you know mm -hmm. what I mean yeah um so that's exciting um but yeah I like to, I'm adding a little more texture inside to kind of create that like shadow Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When when you don't have that, it'll be like you can kind of yeah. tell it's a little darker in there. But um, so yeah, I'm not gonna finish all this. It's a long show of me drawing hot leaves. Um, no, I mean that's the thing is like you know you got you got two days. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a point in between that you can kind of play catch up, whatever you don't get done today. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean it's this not, you know, this is already I already did all this. I just want to show you guys. Um, oh, okay, I'll, cool. I'll okay. fast forward. Fast, fast forward. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like I already did all the work. I'm just, yeah. yeah. No, but it's, it's true. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of tedious stuff that you oh, gotta yeah. do to make a exactly. you know a really nice piece of art. And sometimes, uh, it's not the most exciting to watch. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely that. That's why I thought it'd be smart to, uh, yeah, get it done beforehand. But at this point, um, I would finish all the leaves and then I'd start uh, just kind of adding some weight to it. You know what I mean? Get these mm -hmm. shadows in here and, um, you know, kind of get it a little more three dimensional. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, cause with these, I mean, you depend a lot on your line work mm -hmm. um, for this. So yeah, it makes sense to do a lot of this stuff. Um, it's definitely leans more on the comic book mm -hmm. definitely. style where your, your blacks really are kind of dictating most of what's on the page. Yeah, and I think I don't. I haven't really decided yet, but I think I'm gonna play with the color of the outline on this drawing, and then yeah, when cool. I start painting, I don't know, just kind of play around a little. But um, so yeah, you get the idea here. Just <laughs> Wade was saying, if in. only Photoshop had a uh, fast forward button. I know. I was gonna joke like that I, I hit the F7 button and then Photoshop just mimics my drawing style and finishes Yeah, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, AI, can yeah. you figure out what's in my mind and what I'm drawing and just yeah. finish it for me? Thanks. Right? I think... I've done this before. I think there you know is, what I'm trying to do. Isn't there some crazy program that, like, you, like, put all the artists, like, 
paintings into it and then it just prints out like a, an original based oh, on their dude, I'm style sure. there's dude, gotta so, be something like that well so, once once so uh elon musk gets that like exactly. link or whatever <laughs> elon will take care of it here like, soon enough we can stop stop with all this pesky art yeah what are these these hands i don't want to use these hands come on <laughs> so just need a, a head in a jar good to go exactly so here's the finished beer and oh, where's nice. this head look at that and then this line of motion and action Ooh, ooh. Sorry. Beers What's happening? All over the place. So this is finished. You can nice. see um you know the, the depth I was talking about and then yeah, nice lightweight spinning around. Yeah. And then this is the um this is his little his the top of his whoa, the top of his head. Oh okay, so nice. The, so this is his brain that mm -hmm. is drinking from his his brain juice here. So nice. yeah. <laughs> so let's get another. It's a tough job out there, folks. Tough job. Um, I'm dry, dry beer it's... skeletons. Yeah. So I'm gonna start doing, um, kind of turning, turning these bones into flowers. Um, so let's start here. But uh, so the there's a, we got a lot of flowers going on in the uh, brewery. Um, the owner's daughter, my friend Clara, owns a uh, flower farm. Mm -hmm. So we've always got like cool, fresh flowers. And uh, so I like incorporate that a lot into the artwork. That's right. It's a little, little flower sternum. So how long have you been doing uh, digital? Uh, I'm like, I've kind of been like toying with it forever. Um, mm -hmm. Even in uh, like, like I think I got Photoshop for the first time in like middle school. I was in a band and we, uh, I would like make our flyers and stuff like that. And yeah. Get into that. But uh, it was very bare bones. I'm still, I'm still pretty bare bones when it comes to using the computer. Yeah. Um, but it's the the thing is like you can you know this is huge like compared to like you know i'd have to have a giant canvas to be able to right. uh, get this detail yeah. um and this allows you to zoom all the way in and you know what i mean like this would be a gigantic drawing yeah. and uh you know you can't just be carrying around giant pieces of paper all the time it's crazy yeah i mean that's and that's kind of the thing it's like you know same with me where it's like i did a lot of fine art and had shows and stuff. And, you know, yeah. I used to work, I used to work at a stamp and engraving shop and we had an epilogue laser and you guys saw I was doing all kinds of laser engravings and paintings, That's cool. and just, but it was super fun. But it, you know, in the end, you know, it's not really cost effective. There's yeah. tons of supplies. You got to store them somewhere, put them somewhere. Yeah. You know, definitely. the cleanup, just the time it takes you, if you mess up, <laughs> you know there's no undo oh, yeah. button definitely not um, yeah I and it just became a thing button. where yeah i think working with a lot of clients starting to realize that a lot of them don't know what they want until mm -hmm. they see what they don't want and so i was like i can't afford to do this yeah. traditionally anymore and so kind of became that natural progression of like okay how can i how can i kind of replicate this yeah. digitally and I, I mean, I just looking at your style, it, it feels that way. It's like, I still want that ink. It's, it's that drawing and ink it's, style. It's you know? close. It definitely, you feel like you're like angering the different. art gods by not, you know, using <laughs> paper and pencil. Oh, but... I mean, yeah. I mean, my, if I draw on paper, it's still, it's still going to be just slightly better than yeah. my digital yeah. work. Just oh, the, the quality of the line. I just, I can't yeah. get it. Perfect, it's yeah. But... That's why I, I like the, uh, the live trace because it captures all those like imperfections and uh you know yeah, ra true. rather than using the pen tool and illustrator to trace everything i just for my style i don't like the way that looks yeah i mean that's you know that's there is something to be said of like trying to find a way to get from your sketch or like the energy from your drawing and be able to digitize it or you know i had a uh a buddy uh he used to show at a gallery used to work at and he was all about projecting his murals which with most you know 
street yeah. artists, graffiti guys, like it's a big no, no, but yeah. his big thing was I want my exact yeah. sketchbook drawing on the wall. I don't mm -hmm. want to like try to do it again. It's Definitely. like, I want this energy on the wall. And so oh, we got a jet that's, that's over. <laughs> do you hear that? Sweet. Jesus. Oh, now we do. Yeah. It's a, it's a loud right. toilet. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like a fighter jet. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I think there is some kind of, you know, battle of like trying to figure out the best way to use digital. And uh, there's so many different ways. So, some people are just like masters and like, yeah, they want everything to be digital. And, like you know, and they're, that's, but then I think that other side of it is like, how can I make this look as least digital as possible? Definitely. That's, that's my you know? main goal most of the time, too. Yeah. And that's um, that's why I like adding like this weight up here. Uh, I don't know; it makes it seem a lot less um, digital looking, just because everything's yeah. not the same line weight, and um, it just looks like right. the drawing. Are you? So we had a question from Matt uh, Matt Martin. Um, he's just kind of wondering what kind of hardware you're using uh, for sketching and painting. Obviously, for sketching, you're talking about off the computers, you know pencil paper and microns yeah um but right now what are you what are you drawing on right now um your digital hardware what do you mean photoshop yeah not photoshop but like what are you actually are you drawing on a tablet are you on oh, a Cintiq? Yeah. are you on the, like what I'm, do you, I'm using what do you a Wacom use? tablet boom all right so, yeah i think i don't know if that's old school or not but i like it um i think you know i think it's a preference i know yeah i used to use a one like that and then i switched over to a cintiq and was like ah. but i know what's, some people i mean there's a uh, cintiq is where it's a it's wacom's uh they make the screen so you draw directly onto this oh, it's like a okay, second cool. monitor um but you know like i know uh guys like uh wes burt you know uh who's an incredible uh marvel he's does a lot of marvel uh concept art okay but he refuses to switch over to a cintiq or you know it's, it's all yeah. about just seeing it directly on your computer screen. Definitely. It's, so I think it's just, yeah, preference with that. I think, I think I, I bought my computer and like the next day they came out with uh, the iPad pro that could support Photoshop. <laughs> so it's just like, well, like, decision's been made. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But, but I've, I've messed with it a little. I have um, my buddy Herbie's a tattoo artist and that seems mm -hmm. to be the game changer for that um everyone iPad. everyone's doing the ipad and drawing and you know you can sketch so quickly for like a tattoo yeah and just yep. like boom yeah i use both i use my ipad a lot um i mean i do i actually because i use uh clip studio for comics um, yeah and so you do comics I've, I've been yeah i've been working on a graphic novel for the past oh, couple that's of years awesome, in like my free time and it's I, I'm on page like 170 now. It's like my first ever comic book, and it's making like a 200 page graphic novel like an idiot. That's <laughs> awesome, though. So, like, deep in the game, I'm like, <gasps> but Your yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, oh my God, I have insane respect for all comic book artists. It's like, so These much guys work. Are mad men. Yeah. It's like one page. I'm like, oh, there's so much drawing. So much but, drawing. And the like. But, and planning and just you know oh, making it well, all and this I, I i'm working with a script writer and he's he does movie scripts so nothing's broken down into panels so i'm kind of like the director too which is really yeah it's been awesome but it's also you know i'm doing like twice the work because it's like i'm reading the scripts and then like figuring out how to break it down into pages and then panels and yeah so it's been an interesting interesting journey but having the the ipad um you know because if you photoshop's on there now you've got the procreate you've got clip studio you've got a lot of yeah. options now and Procreate it's relatively cool. like i can still my best lines are always i think are on the the big cintiq just because i can really get the hand motion but the ipad's pretty close i mean and you can take it anywhere you know yeah and that's the super big thing. small it's, yeah so I guess I wouldn't be able to do this. We wouldn't be able to do this with an iPad. Though. I mean, like in a monitor or something, probably. Well, you mean um, like for the, the show? Adobe Live? Oh, yeah, no, we've do, do people, people do. Use... Oh, yeah, really? okay. yeah. Um, cool. I mean, they have a laptop as well. Okay. Um, I believe um, it's like a camera. Yeah. But yeah, no, we've done we've done shows with uh, people working with uh, iPad for sure. 
That's awesome. Yeah. When you when you work, are you do you put on music? Or are you like a podcast guy? Or oh, what's, man. Your, I do, what's your go to? I do all kinds Change of stuff. I yeah, I'm and I'm like totally I'm totally ADHD, so I like usually have like multiple things going. On. Yeah, same. I I am a I'm a I'm usually a movie TV guy. Okay, of like things that I just have already seen or like you know watching Spirited Away again for the nice thousands, thousands awesome. time or, you know like something some animation on or or you know adult swim or something um how do you how do you pronounce his name harizaki makotako oh um hayao miyazaki okay yeah yeah i mean you can watching that movie every time it's just like all right i'm gonna do better oh dude yeah i mean the studio ghibli and what they've yeah ghibli i don't know how you say it but yeah pretty pretty incredible stuff and obviously he's a total madman creative genius workaholic um, yeah but i think that movie specifically was obviously yeah they're hit all, all the right pretty amazing they're Tanya. all amazing you know Nas- nausicaa uh that was a really good one valley of the wind um, yeah one of his the, earlier the ones. castle moving castle. castle in the sky yeah, yeah. um it's just so crazy yeah, but, but especially that's... spirited away like the the when they're with all, all the food the way he draws food is so like just all the know, eating scenes i mean yeah. even like how's how's moving castle too like there's not a lot of people that animate yeah. like Who dinners think, and meals yeah. and that's such a part of yeah. him like the mundane things of like you have this huge fantastical world and mm-hmm. he's making sure to include like how they tie their shoes or like yeah. you know, having a meal or like just sipping so i love it there's uh, yeah there's always, something so they're always so sloppy about it. when they eat too they're all- <laughs> Yeah. I know well I know too with you know Japanese culture um you know slurping is yeah. a sign of respect for you know um, it's like it's so like, good that you need to like show yeah. that, um you know you're yeah. like losing yourself in the meal so fun. yeah I'm okay with it yeah definitely um uh real quick so okay it's 10 o'clock we're a half hour in if you guys are just joining us we are with Bobby Rivers uh this is our drawing and painting day so super excited to have him here we're doing we're working on photoshop and i think we're working on a beer label correct yeah um, okay cool this is um, this is the beer label yeah we've got our uh our, our beer skeleton our hop skeleton who uh the fool the fool yeah um yeah. if you guys are on youtube watching this hi um <laughs> come on over to uh behance uh b.net slash adobe live behance.net.net slash adobe live doesn't matter what you put in but come on over and join us here in the chat you guys can ask bobby whatever questions you want um really excited to have you guys here and again if you guys aren't here we don't have a show so thank you for coming <laughs> by <It's, laughs> this is really fun i mean it's like you know free free tutorials for people it's kind of I love it, man. Insane. It's it's amazing. I mean, after I found I, Adobe Live, I was I like, I didn't know is... about it. Oh, neither did I until a couple of years like, ago. I could I, I like, could have been is... using this for a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? It's yeah. like there's so oh, much wow. I don't know. And so, you know, everyone does it their own way, and there's just so much oh, to learn. It's amazing. So yeah, come on over to b.net slash Adobe Live. And we're gonna be doing this until 1130. So Another, another about another hour 20 minutes bobby so all right you know just so you have an idea and tomorrow don't forget we're going to be doing the same thing part two and we're going to have an artist spotlight which is super cool hell yeah so tune in tomorrow please all right doing some so now are these still hop leaves so these are flat these are just like kind of oh, this is the flowers made stuff. up like it it's not like a specific type of flower it's just kind of artist interpretation of you know leafy right. i don't know i don't have you ever seen annihilation with natalie portman yes so it was a little bit of inspiration from that if you remember you know how the how those whatever you want to organisms were growing yes definitely Very cool took a little that bit. movie messed me up man dude same <laughs> that spoiler <laughs> alert that <laughs> screaming bear <laughs> oh my god dude nightmare I was like, all right because i'm you know usually with uh sci-fi it's like there's a point where i'm like oh mm-hmm. my it's so unbelievable that like i'm not this isn't it's cool but it's not pulling me anywhere emotionally but yeah that, 
I was like, holy shit, yeah. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, it's only, it's like half skull face. Like, ooh, that was that, terrifying. Dude, the FX team on that one, they, mm-hmm. they killed it. That was amazing. A lot of it was uh, like sculptures too. Like when oh, the flowers. Oh, was prosthetics? Yeah, those were like real oh, sculptures, man. which is pretty pretty um, awesome. All, all for as many practical effects as they can put in. Yeah. Um, And then the alien at the end was so creepy. Oh, just that that movie was yeah i and just you know there's something about you already had the uh it's kind of like the sci-fi thriller part of it yeah. but you know i think it always gets me when you start to throw in um kind of like the psychological of like you you're you're forgetting you're you're losing your mind yeah you don't yeah, know yeah. where you just were like you don't know who these people are like you like that part is always so terrifying. I was like, that's that's the worst. Anything can happen to you, but losing your mind, it's gotta be that's gotta be the scariest thing, right? Yeah. So this is fast forwarding again. Um, oh look at this. That's hold on, that's a weird layer. It looks like I accidentally drew on the the guitar. Um but yeah, these are the the, the ribs turned into the flowers. They're very cool. Kind of blowing away in the wind. They're gonna create a lot of um, movement. Um, I'm going to get a lot of flower petals kind of blowing around and um, maybe get some flames going on. Get turn, make, you know, this little metal theme we got going on here. We got the double necked Jimmy Page style yes. guitar. The, the, yeah. You got to have two different tuner, you know, yeah. <laughs> if you really want to shred. Um, but yeah, the idea here is kind of like it was chopped off of a, like a burl on a piece of wood. Nice. Um, growth, what have you. So, um, yeah. Then Very I'm cool. going to start doing that inside the ribs here. Um, yes. Yeah, I saw you can some see, interesting. Oh, no, I, go ahead. I always, uh, I always like, it's hard to get the ribs to perfectly line up with the spinal co- like a uh, yes. segment every time ribs I, are hard man dude, ribs they are, are hard. and you're like oh, i got it i got it and then you're like oh man i messed up so that's what's nice yep. about the computer too is you can you know get in there yeah. so let's just fast forward a little further and get um yeah ribs are crazy because yeah. it's a really so, interesting yeah. shape and then you've got mm-hmm. the cartilage that mm-hmm, attaches yeah. in the center that's that's always know, a decision okay, point like these yeah. last few are joined and then it comes up into the stern so there's really only like you know six or whatever seven that are actually attached to the sternum but, yeah. yeah that's always such it's, a decision like do you do i connect the ribs in this drawing or do i like you know because you can draw the cartilage yeah. or not draw the cartilage right but if you it's know. you know if it's a skeleton it's like those the cartilage is it's it wouldn't like, be there yeah yeah it's gone exactly. but so. maybe maybe you could have you know, yeah, like the vines or something that, mm-hmm. you know, takes that place. Start drawing this guy. Start down here with the tailbone. The Cossacks. Yeah. I broke my Cossacks once. It's pretty oh, fun. God. I've actually <laughs> heard that is one of the most painful things. It was a lot of laying on my stomach and not sitting down for a while. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I think it's the only bone you... I've ever broken. Do you mind telling us how it happened, or is it? Uh, uh, I've <laughs> done it. A, I've done it a couple times. I um, co- wait. You've broken your cossacks a couple times. Yeah. Um, what? <laughs> one oh, time dude. I was. What did I do? I jumped up. I was in college, at the prestigious Tyler School of Art in Philadelphia. Um, Philadelphia. But I jumped up and was hanging on this like roof overhang. Uh, see it like thing out um mm-hmm. like the walkway down from the entrance to the dorms and it uh it was wet it had rained and i like jumped up and was hanging on it and just like slipped off and fell bit backwards and landed basically upside down like head down the stairs feet up the stairs on the stairs and it was pretty cool uh that's... and then one time i was uh i was uh, whitewater rafting and i climbed up on this cliff well i wouldn't i wouldn't call it a cliff i'd call it a, a large rock and uh it was this like swimming jumping hole and uh my buddy 
uh, I don't know if I want you to finish this. Yeah, <laughs> you can imagine what happened. I, I jumped off the rock, landed in the water, went about an inch deep in the water on top of a rock. My so God. always test the water before you go jump. That is nightmare status. Yeah, it was bad. And then oh. I had to float the rest of the uh, rafting trip with a broken butt. <laughs> I, there's Luckily, only one experience soft. I've had where I, I, I used to play football when I was younger. And I, yeah. I had a 250 pound tight end land on me and snapped my collarbone. Oh, man. And we were at a, a school about an hour and a half away from our oh, school man. and I had Just to sit, sit on the bus. wait till the, it was, I had to sit and wait till the, it was a summer passing league. So we didn't have pads on. Oh, and man. I had to wait till the tournament was over. <laughs> so it's like another two and a half hours. Just, I was just kind of sitting there like, it hurts. It yeah. Hurts. You know, you just kind of, you're just in shock. And then after the shock wears off, you're just like queasy with pain. And then I had to take a van ride, you know, one of those 10 passenger van rides yeah. on the free freeway for an hour and a half. And just bumping around, agitating. Yeah. And then my parents were on vacation. So then I had to wait for my friend's mom to pick us up. That was about uh, another yeah. hour and then go sit in an ER. <laughs> like, that was a bad, bad day to break the collarbone. <laughs> so the collarbone is that, that's uh, right here, this, this guy? Yeah, the, cl the clavicle. Yeah, right I here. guess you probably can't yeah. see my little pen. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Okay. I can see it. That's right yeah. at the top of the sternum. I mean, kind I of free, it's a weird yeah. free floating. It is weird. And bone, this guy, too, but... the, uh, the shoulder blade, the way it like twists and connects oh, to the, the arm it's is got, so Yeah, cool. it's. It's rad. It's a rad. That's my new favorite. It's got the bone little ball joint month. too, right at the top. Yeah, <laughs> that's my that's my favorite uh, bone of the month. I think that's cool, man. Oh, just once you start studying the human body, you just yeah. Like, this, how does it, it all work? It just gets crazier and crazier. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's really yeah. the hip bone too. Is like already basically a flower petal. That's kind of like yeah. what started it all. It's like this. Like I think I can pull up my. Uh, this drawing here uh, is kind of where I started um, toying. It's kind of developed from here. You can see this isn't very natural. It's more like yeah. this is natural over here, but this is like, turning right. it into a little flower petal. And then I kind of just started running with that idea. It's cool. It's very cool. Thank you. I mean, the, what's fun about you manipulating the, you know, changing it from bone into plant material is like, no one's gonna be like, oh, that's not a, that's not what a Cossacks looks like. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, There's nothing, none of this is believable anymore. Yeah, I, I was with you, but then I saw the Cossacks, and um, yeah, it's all wrong. Yeah, this, I hate this drawing now. <laughs> and also, I, do, I like the, like the, just the idea, that, like the connection between just like plant matter and you know bones, and mm -hmm. it is surprisingly similar the way, you know, our bodies grow and compared to you know plants well, just the molecular structures of all these you know just yeah it's i remember reading um what's it called i think it's called genomes i think that's just what it's called yeah but you know it's just a whole map of, of a book you know about the map of our body and dna and chromosomes and all this stuff and it's the way they explain it too is each chromosome is explained as like a um like a personality trait yeah it was really cool yeah but just talking about you know the the dna and the building blocks and be like yeah so you know when you guys are born like your same dna blockchains are the same as like a flies like you can literally just take the dna yeah. from a fly and a human you can just interchange them and they have the same information for like your abdomen that's crazy. and your head and you're just like what yeah what <laughs> crazy so, so yeah i mean it's all it's all kind of interconnected in some way shape or form definitely and then, uh, you know, when I s start drawing like tree bark and stuff like that, it's like the pattern is so similar to like your skin cells. And when you zoom in, some, oh, you can't yeah. even tell the difference sometimes if it's all the way zoomed in. Totally. I like how uh, in the in the chat right now, everybody's <laughs> going about with their their injuries. <laughs> nice. Any good you know, ones? that's yeah. Once you start doing the injury stories, that's that's like the that's like bar. It's like bar talk, right? There. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let's see start Paco showing, showing each other star or scars. Yeah, yeah. Paco broke his collarbone when he was nineteen. It's nice. Fun. 
I've see, never done that. I've, I mean, it's usually pretty right. obvious when someone's broken their collarbone. It doesn't look the same really ever again. Oh, mine's twice the thickness yeah. right in the middle because it's it's splintered. It didn't fully oh. break. So they're like, we can't set it. We're just going to put a little like strap on you. Yeah. <laughs> just... Oh, man, that's bad. And it was summertime in L.A. So you can imagine how that thing smelled after a couple of months. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's Trying see. Uh, Uma Korn. Uh, Broke her left pinky during a volleyball match. It's always fun. Ooh. See Rob. Rob fell off a ladder between Christmas and New Year's and dislocated ribs and smashed his thumb. <laughs> dislocated his ribs. Oh, I don't even know what that it's means. Not, it's not fun. <laughs> Doesn't sound fun. Yeah, you know when it just hurts to breathe. Those yeah. Are the, oh those man, are the great that sucks. injuries. Um. Yeah, it's also yeah. You also have like the alcohol injuries, which you know you've always got those friends or. So, and you're like, we, we drunk. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. What's and you're like, what happened? You're like, well, I you just really fell. Know. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I have a, a lot of BMX friends. I never BMXed, but. Oh, dude, uh, BMX injuries. I, if there's anything worse than skateboard bones. injuries, it's BMX injuries. Yeah. Dude, Those are gnarly, slamming. man. You're like, yeah, well, I took this jump and then I had this steel thing in between my legs yeah all of them like right but they're and these stunt pegs that yeah. <laughs> dug into the side of my calf i've been hit by a bmx bike i've never uh never crashed one well i'm sure i yeah. crashed one when i was little but i kind of i could never i was never route. yeah i was never skilled enough for the bmx yeah. i rode i rode road bikes uh when i lived in san francisco nice yeah me too. and i had a fun nuts, had a man. fun accident uh, oh no Oh yeah, to smash into an open. Uh, I was I used to work at Whole Foods and I was like bombing the hill from it to go home in the tenderloin area and nice. Probably going 35, 40 down a hill and there yeah. was an open construction pit that they oh, were about no. to fill in a couple hours, but this was like midnight, so it was yeah. unmarked and just went into like a foot deep pit of gravel on like an old steel road bike <laughs> and Damn. smashed into the trolley island with my face dude the trolley tracks and are no joke so came like this close to knocking my teeth out but thankfully only uh stepped away with a shattered thumb which i guess is oh, not no. great but so i had to do the the pins in the hand and a couple surgeries so oh, no man that's terrible thankfully it was my left hand this is like yeah. during art school so i could still draw nice. yeah i'm always yeah. terrified i'm gonna do something in my hand oh dude I got guess. it i'm like should i insure it I yeah like i should insure it if something happens yeah i got i got hit by a car on my bike in philly oh, yeah. it wasn't that the bike got more hurt than i did but uh yeah it was bad this this uh kid ran up and stole my keys like my, i like got after hit. you got hit yeah i got hit <laughs> basically the the fork was like yeah. like that's this. such a that's such a story man that, so funny. san francisco would do the same thing too yeah. <laughs> this kid right came up stole my keys and took off running and i was like that is going to be so inconvenient um i chased him down i got to his house and like his friends were there and i was like holding my bike i'm all bloody and i was like dude can i have my keys and his friends were like why did you take his keys <laughs> he was like he just gave them back to me he's like oh, i don't know i'm sorry so you oh gotta go God. get like try every house and like, yeah what's and your end goal yeah so funny. this is a big city you're not gonna have much luck pretty funny kids are hilarious oh, man. yeah i got i got hit by a car and uh I got side swiped in a sidewalk oh no so i was going Damn. about two miles an hour standing up on my bike just like do 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 and this like 90 year old dude in a ford mustang ran a red light and just took me out <laughs> damn mustang i was like yeah i was like okay yeah it's like a rental and his wife he didn't even get out of the car to see if i was okay <laughs> That's messed like, up. Yeah. Thankfully, I had a few people that saw it happen and were like, we'll go to court for you. And I'm like, it's it's all good. As long as he yeah. just buys me a new bike. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mine was a, a hit and run. But oh, that's, was that was suck. it was fine. I ended up, I, I was in art school. I still went to class. Oh, yeah. That's the, <laughs> yeah. That was the same thing with me. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. I was in the hospital the next day at class drawing yeah. I was like she's like you're late and i was like look at me like i was like holding my shirt and like blood everywhere just like bleeding from your face you're mm -hmm. like i'm sorry it's like do you have off. a good excuse you're like yeah, I, yeah it's pretty good <laughs> i love these these uh 
little spinal cord pieces they just like looked like little roses to begin with and yeah that's great really fun and then up to the this guy But yeah, when I color this, I usually, I do, I'll color it for the can, you know, pretty complex versus the t-shirt. The like you were saying mm -hmm. earlier, it's more block coloring because it's going to be screen printed and you can right. only do like five colors. So that I'll save it um, before I start coloring and then color it twice, two different, one, you know, more dumbed down and then one like this. Yeah, we um, have you ever heard of the process of uh, sublimation? I don't think so. So th that it's like, I don't know if how new it is, but I guess newer. But when my my boss at the time at the print shop had gotten a printer specifically for sublimation. And it's basically the process of turning, a, you know, the ink into a gas. What? And then when it cools, it solidifies in the in the threads of the shirt or you know metal or whatever you're printing. Oh, that's on. really cool. It's a, yeah, it's interesting. I think it's it's kind of a way to you can you can do photo, mm -hmm. you can do photos, you can do you know full color anything you know high def, and then yeah, you just, I've been you can, trying like to solve press. that problem for a couple of years now. Find a good solution to uh, being able Should to print look, a full image. Yeah, you could look into sublimation. I mean, it's you know, it's different. It's not, it's, yeah, not, it's not your normal screen print. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not like it's not on the the shirt or the image. Yeah, they also like but, burn it in or something. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's like it's like you get sublimation paper, you print it out from your computer, and you get you know, and then you take that sublimation paper and you put it with you know. You basically have like heat heat sheets on either side. Mm -hmm. You put it onto whatever you're you're uh, printing on, and then you have a heat press. You know that's specific temperature and all that, and then you press it for a specific amount of time, and it transfers the image over. But it, they don't fade because it's not. Yeah. It's actually inside the threading. It's not that's like awesome. sitting on top of it. So it's cool. It's it's hard to do. It's yeah, not it sounds, an easy process. It it probably wouldn't be as readily available as screen yeah printing. i'm like i'm like curious because i think they do a lot with like um sports and like jersey mm -hmm. materials and stuff because um, i think it's, it's obviously harder to print on those types of synthetic materials yeah um so but yeah i'm curious i haven't really looked it up in a long time i'm curious where the we printed the this at. um let me get back. we printed this on with some, I don't know what process he used here, but oh, yeah, two times, great. two times in the wash, and it was gone. <laughs> like no joke. So, whoops, that's that's not the process you want to do. That's, no, that's that's not the one. Yeah, but I did uh, I did some some t-shirts um, for this band. Uh, not that. Um, I guess that doesn't have, um, um, but the pencil, getting the pencil to show up on a shirt, um, yeah. that was hard to do. Here we go. But, um, and I don't know what their process was. I should probably reach out to them and ask. Well, you know, there's a way to do so with silk screening as well. I don't know if you've done any silk screening. Um, not a lot, but I, I've done some really simple, uh, drawings before. Yeah, Almost there's like, a way. So you could like, do like a photo. Yeah. With silk screen, um, you do the, you do the, um, I think it's the, either the CMYK process or red, green, blue. I can't remember because it's been so long. But you basically do those colors and you separate it into those colors using a. You basically digitally separate it into those colors. Yeah. And then and then put those onto the acetate. In those layers, okay. and so when you print it. It, it kind of prints the uh, like, photo colors. You like, you know, okay. it's not, it, it comes together and, and prints like you would on, you know, like a piece of paper. Um, okay. I don't know the fidelity of that. Like, you know, obviously being in art school doing it, like we, we never really got it yeah. too perfect because we were all still learning. But I know there is a process for that for doing like photos and stuff um, just through traditional silk screening. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I did some printmaking classes, and it, it was it just like intro, and mm -hmm. it's each print we did was a completely different style, so you never really got able to dial in like one specific. You know, I'm sure if you were to right. major in that, you could, you know, you learn a lot more. But yeah, you know, William had a question for you, um, and he said, "Would you ever be okay with having your art on a terrible beer?" On a terrible beer? Uh, and I'm not sure if he's saying that. I, would, I don't company, think I would mind. Or uh, just the beer doesn't taste good. Yeah. But. Um, I mean, I've definitely uh, done some some can designs for beer that I didn't necessarily, you know, enjoy myself. Yeah. No, it's a preference wanna, thing. I don't want to, you know, badmouth anyone. But No, no, no. Please, uh, please don't badmouth. What, what was this? This is a, this is a, Milkshake IPA, vanilla beans, and sweet cherry puree. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I didn't need to taste this one. Look, I mean, there's some wild ones out there. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I think like that's the thing anymore. It's like, how weird can we be? Like, yeah. You know. I never tried gotta, that beer. You gotta I stand out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, it was delicious. Like, if I could just have a Sunday. Yeah. inside of my ipa yeah it's inside. like it's already thick enough and now it's a milkshake yeah. IPA, what? do they I make ipa popular. stout like ipa chocolate stout <laughs> so i don't even know if that's possible it's like it's just you it's just like have to eat it with a spoon just, <laughs> it's like oh, does this have cream in it yeah yeah i've i've definitely had um so sometimes the keg will just like, it'll be like a pocket in the keg where if it's unfiltered, it's just like thick. Mm -hmm. And when you're, you know, bartending, um, you'll kind of have to pour through that um, to get just like get through that pocket in the keg so you can like keep serving the beer. And some people right. like it, but so, like it's super yeasty. And I've tried it before and I was like, this is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, definitely give yourself a stomach ache. That's for sure. Ugh. Yeah, old old Chris in art school. I I might have taken taken a chance with any anything. Yeah, <laughs> like is it free? Yeah, exactly. Just, I will taste it. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Living in uh, living in Philly, I don't know why, but we we really like forty ounce. Uh, Oh, the malt uh, liquor. Malt liquor, yeah. You got you guys. Were you guys Mickey's or what? Oh my god! If we're gonna, if we're gonna be honest, we were doing uh, high gravity steel reserve two eleven. Oh. It, was, it was bad. It was bad. Hurricanes. Hell yeah. Oh, gee, okay. Uh, and yeah, then what, that's... what's the grossest thing ever? I think was... steel reserve is close to grossest thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, brass monkey, I believe, is oh, where yeah. you add orange juice in the morning. Oh yeah. Well, you oh, got to get through it somehow. What were we thinking? <laughs> yeah, if I could just add a bunch of sugar and acid on top of that. Yeah, perfect. Epitome of health. Yeah. Oh man, when the when those uh those four locos came out. Oh, dude, was, I was like right in college. I avoided those like the plague. I was like, I already know what's gonna happen. I don't. I don't need to do that. Thank you. What was the other one? Sparks, I think. Was yeah, kind of dude. Turn your, turn, your, turn your tongue orange. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I used to work at an art gallery. And so we had, you know, uh, in San Francisco, a bunch of street art galleries. And like, uh, and we would always get sponsored by, you know, alcohol companies. Yeah. For big shows and stuff. And Makes sense. Sparks, Sparks was around. Oh, That's not what I would God. assume an art gallery. They just loved giving about. us, yeah, like here. Like, do you want some nice wine? Like no Sparks. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. That some rowdy, rowdy nights, caffeine and alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, the, if you drink two Four Locos, you were out of your mind. Like you were the incredible. Dude, fan. I saw people. I was like, mm -mm, no, nope, yeah, not, can't can't go that direction. I can't, I mean, it didn't last long. That's for sure. No, no, it didn't. You're like, oh, people are losing <laughs> yeah, you're children. Like, this you is guys, for children. You guys can't have this. No, I can't believe that. Oh my God. I went to the beach with a bunch of kids one time and this kid, he didn't, uh, he didn't throw in any money down for the uh, hotel, but he bought a case of old Four Locos. Like when they, oh, you what know, a sweetheart. The OG recipe. 
So Everybody's was, like, what? Yeah, it's dangerous. My ex-girlfriend was for loco for Halloween. <laughs> hey. She wasn't she wasn't a keeper, I guess. No. <laughs> she's no, she's I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I think I think like right. ninety percent of girls were four locos for Halloween that year. Yeah. All right, let's 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 rock this illustration. Let's move forward. Let's get back to it. Yeah, let's see what we're what's going on here. So we are basically laying out the the line work. This is the base of our illustration here. Um, I'm assuming. So what do we? What's our end goal today for this first day? Today, what are we trying the, to get to the end goal is getting all the line work done, all the drawing part of the uh, illustration done. Right. And then, uh, and then tomorrow we're gonna, we're gonna color it. Very cool. And so we're still using the uh, hard round brush. I mean, is mm -hmm. this, you, you, you basically use the same brush for Pretty the much entire the whole process, time, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice thick opaque brush. You've got the pressure sensitivity for the line weight. Mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely feel like this is, I mean, I know there's all these like great ink brush sets and stuff, but I in the end, like I feel like this is. Them. You, I mean, you should, man. There's, you know, obviously you've got all the uh, Kyle Webster uh, brushes that uh, are now obviously official with Adobe, and there's so oh, many great cool. packs. But I know you've got um, there's tons of uh, texture brushes, especially with ink. Um, yeah, all these old school uh, brushes and do all the cool comic stuff you can do where you get got old ink brushes and you know quill yeah. pens and i've been seeing so uh, many cool paper textures and... ads for them paper textures oh my gosh you got to get into paper texture too that's i feel like what i've been moving in with uh, a lot of concept art and, and character design and stuff and yeah you try to move more into more into like you know how much how much story can i get on one page and you know I, it's nice sometimes with paper texture if you're trying to do watercolor you know, or you want that, you know, canvas, you want that canvas to show through, you know, yeah. you just, you could do it yourself where you, you know, take a photo, a nice high res photo of some of the paper that you have that you like, and then you just, you know, draw on top of that. Um, you could do, or, you know, you can use it as a multiply layer and put it on top so that all the, the textures are kind of there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a fun, it's fun to, once you start kind of pushing more that way of, trying to really make it feel uh natural or traditional um, yeah but this is i mean as far as microns go like for the for you know for most people that aren't don't have like a really discerning eye or can like you know seen a lot of it you're not going to really tell the difference that much um, yeah you know the most you're going to tell probably is with the coloring process or something mm -hmm. but i think with yours you keep it so flat it really does just it has that print vibe from the beginning yeah, and when it gets printed too, depending on what you're printing on, uh, it really it looks like you know almost like an original. Sometimes I really like it when it gets screen printed. Like on the computer, it looks it's very obvious that it's done with a you know on the computer, but it was mm -hmm. drawn on the computer. But when it, the ink sets into the fabric of like t-shirts and stuff, there's like all these little imperfections that it takes on, and I really like that. Yeah. Um... Okay, so it's 1030. We are an hour in. We are with Bobby Rivers. He is uh, showing us his process for a beer label that he is working on right now with his skeleton hops, fool characters, super awesome. Um, so thanks again for joining us. If you guys are on YouTube watching this, please come on over to Behance at b.net slash Adobe Live. That way you guys can hang out with us, uh, hang out in the chat. We got Wade helping us out today. So any questions you have, technical or personal or about the art, doesn't matter. Uh, we'll try to answer as much as we can. Um, but yeah, this is day one. We're going to get through this and then uh, hopefully what well, we're, sorry, I forgot. We're trying to get to colors today or we're just doing colors tomorrow. We're going to do some colors tomorrow. Okay. Just... So we're, we're trying to get the line work done today. Mm -hmm. um, get that all set up so that we can do colors uh day two but uh so these are, i'm going through some reference images i took uh while i was home um oh nice i'm trying to so the idea is that he's the skeleton is going to be like growing out of the earth and um 
like slowly decaying kind of uh where we have a bunch of different mushrooms that i wanted to have growing growing out of him um a lot of moss and lichen and like I, we were saying earlier about the uh just like the the textures of wood kind of looking like skin and stuff like that kind of have that like mm -hmm. peeling off um it's kind of wild too because it's almost like a topographical map right yeah, the definitely. way that they grow it's so yeah it's really so, cool so this is like a, this is like a sycamore that i based her skin off of the way that uh sycamores just kind of peel kind of like a like a dogwood or a beech tree also mm -hmm. um so i'm going to try and bring that aspect into it i was thinking down here yeah nice um whoop. so I don't know. Let's add some mushrooms. How about that? These are yeah. turkey tails. Oh, nice. And then we have a little toad somewhere down here. I had some nice oysters that we found. There we go. Let's bring that guy up. So, That's um, a cool one. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, just the, so can it square? where the brewery is located is the mushroom capital of the world. So what? try and incorporate mushrooms as much as possible. So let's get now some... do they is it a lot of uh, like foraging and harvesting there? Um, is um, it integrated at all into the food there? Or is it just kind of it's a wet place and a lot of mushrooms at the brewery or or just in the, the the city, the area, the whole yeah. Um, I mean, the so the foraging is getting a lot more popular. Um, people are actually starting to grow, you know, oysters and um, chanterelles and kind of you know, not like you're not just like basic portobellas and stuff like that. So that's becoming um, a lot more popular, which is really cool because they're delicious. Um, <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, we we wandered around in the woods. We found these guys. Ended up cooking them for uh, for New Year's. My buddy Ian is the the master of uh, mushroom foraging. And then we have some. You know, the West Coast has you know a lot of mushrooms too. Mm -hmm. We have a bunch bunch of morels up here. Yeah, gosh, where's my brother? Used to live in Oregon. Where's tons. yeah, that's like the mecca. Yeah, I remember he. Oh, was it witch's jelly? I don't know what nice, the official yeah. name is, but I was just like, what is this? Yeah, some of them are so so strange looking. Um, oh my gosh. Like little it's, aliens. It's like yellow goo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fungi is pretty cool. Definitely. Yeah, there's, I mean, you can nerd out about fungi pretty easily for, I mean, so there's some, some people are like, they're not even from this planet. I mean, totally, <laughs> totally believe it. Yeah. I, you know, it's like, are we from this planet? I mean, something yeah. crashed and started life, you know, mm -hmm. who knows? Yeah, I know there's, I'm trying to remember his name, but there's like a mushroom expert. I can't remember. I feel like I've heard him on several podcasts. Um, he is like a, he even wears like a hat made out of like this giant mushroom that's awesome God, i can't remember if i remember it I'll, I'll say it but um yeah it is a pretty pretty amazing uh organism there's so many varieties mm -hmm. i think it's like has the most varieties of like any other living organism right on earth something i like don't that. know i know that it's the lot one of you know potentially the largest living organism on earth Besides right. maybe the the aspen tree, because they're right, which they're both very similar in the way that they kind of connect underground mm -hmm. to like you know, then they'll stretch for miles. Right, right. I remember reading about that recently. Just the underground networks mm -hmm. where they're discovering they're like, oh, and it's this like it's huge. It's very similar to like you know the way our brains like kind of talk to themselves and um you know i don't know how to explain that very well i'm not a scientist <laughs> yeah but That's cool. i got some some look it up guys yeah Google look it up it. look it up i don't know we can't be knowing everything so 
some like so do you so do you do um like what are you full full-time uh freelance illustrator or what's kind of your yeah. your yeah. day job and is this do you do more stuff other than kind of alcohol based yeah i do i do else? all kinds of stuff man um literally whatever whatever anyone wants um uh a lot of just word of mouth um some i do work for a lot of farms and like doing like packaging design and mm -hmm. um for their products and a lot of t-shirt design um different restaurants um and then it's actually pretty cool i just got a magazine cover uh just through behance um, oh, nice. Some, Did you hear that, guys? Yeah. It was like, as soon as I made a Behance, some French Canadian magazine approached me and was like, hey, like, we would love to use your work. Um, you know, let's do it. And I was just like, cool. Mm -hmm. How did you hear about it? And they were like, Behance. <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah, I've awesome. also, I've gotten, I've gotten job offers uh, through Behance as well. Yeah. So if you guys don't have a profile, get it up. Definitely, man. Flesh it out. Fill it with art. And then, just how I mean, you basically just t click a button almost and your behance turns into your website and you buy a domain Completely. and and it's like that's not that expensive and i have yep adobe portfolio yeah that's, i love it absolutely yep, love it it's so easy i'm operating off of the same thing i mean i had my own website that i had you know built with my friend years ago and yeah ended up you know i, I couldn't maintain it myself and i was like i can't keep doing this and then found Adobe portfolio. I was like, Oh, this is free. And maybe I'll just set this up. And then with Behance and getting on there, I was like, Oh, this is so streamlined. And there's just enough customization that I can kind of make this my own. So yeah, I've had a great experience with it as well. Yeah, definitely. I love the layouts. I mean, they, you know, it's, it's, they're simple. They're I'm, like direct. They're like, yeah. Get, yeah. They're I'm really, sure if you wanted really well to get done. super and like start doing a little bit of coding or whatever, you might be able to. I'm not really sure, but I don't, I don't, wouldn't mess with that anyway. So I like yeah. how, how user friendly it is. Yeah. And you know what? I think nowadays for most people, it's the, the faster that they can see your artwork and what you're about, the better. I yeah. Realize that like if there's more than one or two steps, yeah, they might just keep moving. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Behance is nice because it's. I feel like my Behance, I can kind of update it with any kind of project, whether it's finished or working on, and and also now you can do on Behance you can do the uh, live streams. I don't know if you knew about that, but they are hosting okay, I have seen live streamers that. now. So if you go on Behance, you can see a bunch of different people that are doing live streams as well, which is really awesome. So. Not only can you get a profile and then, you know, build a website off of that, but then now you guys also have a home for live streaming, which is uh -huh. really cool. And you just can use third party software. Um, I think OBS, I think it's the open broadcasting software is, is a really cool one that a lot of people use that I've used. Um, but yeah, it's a cool way, you know, of kind of getting into live streaming as well. So it's yeah. like you can practice on your own or, you know, you can just start putting yourself out there. Um, but yeah, Behance really, it's, there's so many cool things in one place. Um, and like you said too, even with job searching or people finding you. So it's, it's good. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. I was, I had no idea. There's a lot of things on the internet. Yeah. There's a lot. So, right, so this is where we're doing some of the lichen, right? Is that what yeah. This is lichen, um, this green, and then I miss, mm -hmm. this is almost, I mean, lichen and mushrooms aren't too, uh, yeah, they're pretty similar, mm -hmm. um, but this, these orange guys I'm kind of trying to mimic here. I don't honestly know if they're lichen or mushrooms, but I like them. So yeah, you, this is how I, I basically just take a lot of uh take a lot of pictures on my phone when i go for walks in the woods and um try and incorporate them into the drawings depending on where the where the you know customer is located you know um yeah kind of, 
but these this is all east coast stuff but um you know when i work out here in tahoe um i incorporate the lake and you know all the all the cool rocks that we have and you know just i don't know i feel like people i don't know I feel like at home in your drawing when you do that sort of thing and makes them feel nice and warm and happy inside oh yeah people appreciate you know it's always good to introduce other elements that either making your yeah, art unique or telling a story about the place, especially with, um, you know, marketing products, advertising, if you can personalize it a little bit more and bring it home, uh, mm -hmm. people love that, especially with, I mean, breweries, perfect example. You yeah. Know, if you got a, a local brewer and you're integrating things from Definitely. nature, from the city or from the culture there, it's, it's huge. Yeah. I've, we have a, a lot of really cool uh, spring flowers that I try and incorporate into the uh, drawings and it kind of becomes like a little treasure hunt for the, um, for the viewer. Cause you, you know, you're, you're drinking a beer can, you're kind of just staring at it a lot of the times right. when, you know, right. and uh, it's nice to have like a little treasure hunt. I did a, this guy's pretty fun. Um, let's see. So during quarantine, um, I made this and so it's basically basically summed up the entire quarantine uh, he's got his uh, he's, Tiger King just came out so he's got he's watching that and he's got his Nintendo yes. here's the bat soup over here that he ate oh my God. and then the mail's just piling up and uh, a lot of drinking a lot of beers so you gotta wipe that butt yeah lots of toilet paper <laughs> lots of toilet paper yeah <laughs> yes the toilet paper hoarding of 2020 so strange yeah but this is this little cur this little wood curl here i saw that and i was like i need to draw that in my drawing i love the way it's doing that so let's get kind of get him yeah going. that had to be a huge i feel like bidet sales had to had to go up. oh my god they did it all right you want to hear a funny story my old room yeah. had two bidets in it and it was I guess it was for like a woman who uh, like she was like paraplegic or something. Mm -hmm. And then I moved in. But so I never used them. I don't know what you need two bidets for it. But um, the one was like a mo more modern one. It was like an attachment. And mm -hmm. um, so it's like you kind of just like screw it in. And I never used it once. And uh, one night I like went to go to bed and I walked into my room and uh, the mechanism had malfunctioned and was shooting a rocket of water to the ceiling in my room. And there was like, you know, half a foot of water on the ground. Um, everything was absolutely soaked. Uh, oh my it, it took the paint off the ceiling. Oh my so, God. So, yeah. I can't imagine Ooh, how that would feel on your butt. It's a little high pressure. Dude, it was crazy. Yeah, turn that down. Yes. Yeah, so that um, was a fun night. Okay. And, uh, back to the your your photos um it's i just want to reiterate like it's so important getting your own reference and, yeah i mean it you feels, could look this stuff online up online you could do all the things but it just I feels would say, so much better yeah getting it yourself going out there and taking it yourself or if that is impossible i would say trying to get into a library or yeah another great one that someone was saying was like uh, museums and also like um, archives. Yeah. Just finding finding reference that isn't being used by everybody all the time. Um, it personalizes your work so much. Yeah. Uh, and you can just, you kind of find these things that no one else is gonna find. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, you know, Google image search is fine. You know, that can work for a lot of things, but. There's just something to also drawing from real life yeah of course too which is which is like so i had this buddy who uh he collects human skulls so nice. i've been a, i've been able to he's you know, okay right We're, we don't have to worry yeah about he's him, fine so. he okay. didn't he okay. didn't he didn't kill them <laughs> um, <laughs> oh that's <laughs> it's this is all totally well, legal yeah. totally okay, legal we don't have to say his name but um uh <laughs> it's just so cool to, as like you know having to draw skulls all the time and just having this like endless like be able to go over his house and you know get oh, yeah. my own reference pictures and or you know draw them is is so cool 
and I'm oh, it's, lucky to, to be able to do that. There was a, um, I don't know if they do it anymore. There was a traveling show for many years called The Universe Within, or Body Works was another one. I've heard of that. Yeah. Um, there was two. There was one that was, I think, German based. I think the other one was um, from uh, China. But really interesting. Um, they used a process called plasticine or plastination that basically they, you know, take a cadaver and then they inject this liquid that turns everything into plastic. That's um, super cool. I've seen examples of that. It's really crazy. So it's like, you know, they would have entire, um, you know, nervous systems, arteries, yeah. all hardened into plastic that they could display in the shape of the body. I mean, as you know, they had horses stripped so of their cool. muscles. So you could see it was, it was pretty wild. You know, I gosh, one uh, saw one in New York and they even had a, um, uh, a pregnant mother in the stages. I mean, that's cool. it's like it's intense you know I, definitely I've, obviously some people it's maybe a little too intense but as an artist uh, especially somebody that's drawing figures all the time that's what you, i miss about the city not being able to have these like readily available museums where you can just look at stuff like that yeah i miss yeah i've, I've been trying to get back into figure drawing classes yeah. and just it's and most of it's virtual now i know it's i <laughs> obviously I was, everything I but kind of try and start a figure drawing class out here and see if people would be interested because there's nothing like it they're fun like, man yeah. i i loved it i mean just from school um, especially mm -hmm. as an illustrator it just it pushes your skills to a different level because oh, yeah. it's the hardest everything's timed draw. you've got yeah. all these people around you that are you know it's like it's not, each other. it's not competition but it yeah exactly it's just it's an, it's inspiring and you learn a lot really quick just from other yeah. artists um and depending on the model I mean, too like you know oh yeah awesome. the, obviously the models the the main part you know if you yeah. got a great model and yeah yeah i don't I'm, think you realize how hard it is to be a oh model my, i i like, mean, oh, this i had to do it a little bit in uh art school Holy but cow. like the people who would you know make these amazing poses and then hold it for an hour it's like geez that's yeah intense so you so you showed us your um your skeleton your 3d skeleton that you have mm -hmm. is there anything else that you like to use um as reference for these are you are you mostly doing these poses um from your head are you do you usually have like um photo reference that you either try to create or that you're pulling from ever with these so i got you know i got this idea this general pose and then i actually uh just photograph myself um, hey, yeah that's kind of in that in this position and mm -hmm. then use the essential skeleton tool to uh you know put the skeleton into, into that position so yeah um, is that skeleton fully rigged can you like pull its hands and manipulate it or no um, okay but it's i mean it's as good as it's as good as i could get i is it still up yeah no totally um but yeah as far as all it really does is spin around but i mean yeah it's pretty cool you can get some unique perspectives that's for sure and um you know you do have to you know kind of move it around in your head a little when you're trying to, you right. know, the hands are doing specific things and, you know, the, the perspective of the feet and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I guess I'll move up here to this guitar. Oh, wait, Paco's going to be mad, Maya. Uh, Shirley's just asking um, when this session's ending today. We are ending at 1130 today, but Adobe Live is going to continue on after this. So please feel free to stick around. Um, yeah, this that's what's great about this is it kind of, you got one show, but then the next one starts afterwards. Um, yeah. And then day two tomorrow starts at uh, 930 uh, Pacific Standard Time. And then we're going to do colors. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's when that's, everything starts to come together. It gets fun. It gets a lot more yeah. experimental. Yeah, we do colors. We're going to do the artist spotlight tomorrow. So. There's a lot to come back for tomorrow. 
we're obviously very interesting people. Everybody loves listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry. I know it's so we're so the, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the drawing process is a long, tedious, probably pretty boring. If yeah, just mute favorite. us. Put some. Put your favorite music <laughs> on. You know. That's what's nice about uh, you know, they, that you guys archive it because you know, if someone oh, yeah. doesn't yeah. necessarily want to see me draw leaves for. 30 minutes they can just fast forward. no and that's a great point like this stuff it's gonna be you're gonna be able to rewatch it it does get archived so if you guys you know you can only hang out for you know five minutes 20 minutes an hour it doesn't matter you can always come back and rewatch it so that's always great and so bobby just so you know it's 10 55 so we we usually start wrapping things up around 11 20 okay so you're you're pacific standard time right you're in the west you're in tahoe yep. right mm -hmm. okay cool cool beans yeah so this is i don't know if you guys are familiar with burls and like the marbling that goes on inside of them but this is so this is the bark the outer layer of the tree that we're gonna and then on the inside it starts to get all these crazy patterns that um, I don't know. A lot of a lot of woodworkers seek them out and uh, turn them into all kinds of fun stuff. But uh, it's basically just a growth on a tree. Yeah, it's you know, it's kind of like these. It's like the rings on a tree, right? It's like this mm -hmm. period of growth and then stops, and then a period of growth. And, yeah, you know, and they get where the since it's this. Uh, it's kind of, I don't know if it's a disease or if like, I don't know exactly what it is, but the way that the rings are formed inside are super weird and unique because it's like actually like a little, like something's wrong with the tree mm -hmm. and it turns to these like beautiful marbling patterns, which I'm going to try my best to mimic. Yeah. We just, um, down in LA, we just had a huge windstorm. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. past past couple of days power outages i think i think in uh near jpl um the jet propulsion laboratory i think they're recording like 85 mile an hour winds damn so yeah it was and but tons of trees got ripped up or broke so was, it's actually funny i've been seeing a lot of this around because nice. a lot of uprooted trees and snapped roots and being able to see these cross sections and be like holy cow yeah that's crazy. I guess Big Sur is not doing too well right now. With they got they have a huge fire right now. I think, Ugh, and I'm assuming that I'm going to guess those winds aren't helping. Oh, oh hell no! I mean, if that's yeah, yeah. I know. Poor all the fires, man. Yeah, we're hard. just we were just saying. I know you guys. Night. I was going to say. Oh, you're in and you're in South Lake, right? Yeah, we got evacuated. I was going to say that. I mean. I, I, they saved most of it though right i mean the, as far as the populated areas were relatively as far as structure damage there wasn't too much done um unfortunately the local mountain uh sierra at tahoe was like the epicenter of this fire so gotcha they have not even opened yet this season they're struggling that's for sure which is sad because that's like basically where 90 percent of the town works yeah is, is at this mountain and it's like and it's a very like local homey mountain like just you know like old school vibes i don't know if you've ever yeah. seen out out cold but bull mountain don't go change yeah that's we i live in uh monrovia in the san gabriel valley right in the foothills uh, outside of los angeles and okay. our our mountain uh in 2020 like mid-pandemic mid was like it burned the whole mountain and it burned all the way across the mountain range oh, no. to the other side like to death valley <laughs> it's just huge uh, just, but yeah kind of sad that's I mean that's yeah. the mountains i grew up with i think there was like 70 years of growth um it's really like, yeah ah. And it's just like, you know, it's just brown now. Yeah. It's just like, well, it's not going to burn here for a while. But Yeah, that's one, uh, you know, good thing one about plus, it. I guess. But I yeah, we are. The trail that I used to always hike in is it's been closed for a year and a half now. Good it's mushroom good hunting though, after all that. All those. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, well, I mean, this that's the thing, right? It's like the soil yeah. gets mm -hmm. rich and, you know, it's. It is the natural. They, they need it. Natural process. Yeah. It's, yeah. 
it's supposed to do that it's just you know when all your all our houses are in the middle of the woods it's, you know, <laughs> yeah we just built a bunch of yeah, stuff there uh -oh. well the trees are supposed to catch on fire um i did see a question earlier that i want to ask you and i know you'd kind of mentioned it um people were wondering when do you decide of you know just doing this a full photoshop process especially since you work in packaging as well um would this be ultimately brought into illustrator to vectorize it so that you can do so, it or is yeah, it yeah that is one nice thing is i keep the uh the resolution relatively high and keep the image relatively large so that i can vectorize it if you know I want if need to. be yeah is it, usually are, i vectorize are you usually first. delivering rasterized or are you as far yeah. as like the labels uh, like it's I, it's a photoshop file for the t-shirts mm -hmm. um it's it's not uh it depends who you're printing with honestly some people want vector some people some people want jpegs and eps files which i don't even know what an eps file is <laughs> oh yeah eps is uh it's a newer, I think it's a newer file. I've been using that. It's it's definitely like a more compress. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's funny with printing now. And it's like, yeah, we don't want to see a YK file. Like we, yeah. we want an RGB. It's like, but for printing? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, we don't need that anymore. You just give us an RGB. It's like, all right. All right. Oh, spinning wheel of death. Ooh, nice. So I'm starting to build this guitar. Just kind of making it up in my head um yeah we'll see now will this guitar have strings yes it will and okay. all the all the pieces i'm gonna i'm gonna guess i could only fit about two strings maybe three strings on each each neck but the whole idea is like it's got these like natural pockets you know built into the wood from, mm -hmm. from the way it grew and then in theory that would be like the acoustic sound that it would be making yeah i like it because i almost see a face in the guitar yeah as well. yeah i i um when i was first drawing it i had it was a different shape it had like four holes and i like there's isn't there a rule of uh rule three uneven uneven numbers in artwork you don't want it yeah, to be yeah everything yeah it, uneven's always always yeah. or uh odds better. are always better than even yeah yeah, the rule and the the rule of three or thirds, mm -hmm. you know, design wise, just always, yeah, always seems to work out. And it really does too. When you look at it, you're like, oh, it looks so much better. That's in shadow. So yeah, I guess somebody is asking, do you deliver an RGB or a CMYK? Um, let's see. You're working right now in RGB, so yeah, I would say then RGB. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> they they whatever I'm giving them. Yeah. They're good with. Yeah, I used to do. Uh, I used to do stuff for Skrillex and Ausla nice. and all that stuff. And hell yeah! But yeah, it was always something different because I felt like they're always going through <laughs> somebody different every time for posters, shows. It's like you're a different venue. You're working with different local people. But yeah, yeah, I just felt like I felt like. I started out as CMYK and over the years, I just don't get that much anymore. Yeah. It almost seems like it's, it's the way stressful. printers are now. They don't need it as CMYK. Or if you're using like print to order through, you know, online companies, they prefer it in RGB. Yeah. So I don't really it's know the reasons whatever they, for that. Whatever they decide, yeah. Maybe I don't know use these branches to hold the strings that's nice get a little crazy oh and so, steve steve uh, let us know what eps means it's encapsulated postscript so i don't know if that of course yes <laughs> so. encapsulated postscript <laughs> gonna have to just google that too <laughs> okay um, so eps is mostly vector Okay, okay, that's why. That's the, that's a, a good way to deliver vector files. I think that um, I'll, I'll run into that when the printer doesn't have Photoshop, they seem to ask for EPS files a lot of the gotcha. time. But so, did you ever listen to from first to last when you were younger? 
no i know of them i, I yeah. just wasn't wasn't in my uh playlist yeah, yeah. But. that's so funny skrillex is awesome yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his. I was like, that oh, was his band. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah, Sorry. I should have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ended can... up, I ended up meeting him in, uh, in San Francisco. I used to live, live with uh, some producers, and nice. they were on his label. And so he would like, come by the the warehouse where we lived and come hang out with us and party. And it was funny because at the time he was just, you know, he was the guy from that band, you know, from that yeah, band who's now doing electronic music. I was like, oh, who's a Skrillex? That's a weird name. Okay. Yeah. And if you listen, <laughs> like a year uh, later, it's like, oh, that blew up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was the most popular like artist for like that year, I feel. Oh, yeah. And was, if you listen to that band, I mean, it's very, it's different, but at the same time, you can like see Skrillex like coming to be from that music that he was creating yeah. with the full band. Yeah, I think I remember reading about. It. I mean, he started when he was like thirteen or fourteen, right? It was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty young. I feel like when it happened. It's just so so funny that like a screamo band like that became, you know, so popular. Well, not it's not the band, but same yeah. dude. He's like, yeah. he's like, all right, I'm not making enough money here. Let's uh, turn it up a yeah. notch. <laughs> yeah, well, that was that was the funny story. Was he was basically homeless, like in his friends sleeping on his friend's floor making the you know the sprites and monsters album yeah but let's see let's finish this guitar here yeah we got about uh, a little under 15 minutes left before we start wrapping it up um if you guys are jo just joining us we are with bobby rivers and we are working on the uh, you could call it the inking process on yeah. Photoshop, uh, using a hard round brush, making a beer label. Uh, tomorrow on day two, we'll be jumping into the colors. But if you guys are watching on YouTube, I know we don't have a lot of time left, but if you guys just want to come over to b.net slash Adobe Live and you can watch it live on Behance, there you guys can hang out and chat, see the rest of the chat with everybody else and ask any last burning questions before we're over for today. But yeah, so Ooh, far so good. I mean, it's been fun. It's been fun so far. Yeah, so. man, I'm having a blast. So I'm thinking about how to do these guitar strings on the, this is the line tool. We got another tool, folks. We got tools. All right. I don't even know how to use a computer, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, why, why am I here? What's why is that weight wait so crazy? There we go. Oh, yeah, you got to go to the stroke. Um, yeah, it should yeah. be up there. It should be your stroke weight. How's that? Let's, let's zoom in a little, a little bit bigger. Yeah, you should be able to just, yeah, I was going to say you should be able to create it. And if it's still selected, I think you can adjust the number and it previews it live. Let's do four. Let's do three. Seems like a solid ernie ball there we go gosh so, my, my old bass i'm pretty sure those strings are all rusted at this point yeah <laughs> got really sweaty hands and so yeah. it's like the strings rust so quickly i'm just like yeah so we're just gonna pretend that the string would connect from that stick to that stick perfect and then it would wrap around sense. this little stick here I like to make them, the drawings kind of make sense, but also be a little like ridiculous. I mean, it's an illustration. You gotta, yeah, exactly. You gotta take it there. So let's do another one up here. Yeah, we're gonna do three on this one. I think usually it's like when it's a double neck guitar, like one's 12 strings and one's six. Right. We don't have- um, We got a question, got a question from uh, Shirley Sue. And she said, Bobby, did you know from the beginning you wanted to be a beer can label illustrator? Have you ever done other beverage labels, alcoholic or non-alcoholic? I know we kind of covered some of this, but. Uh, um, so I never, you know, I never really thought about it until, um, where was I? I don't know where I was, but um, I saw a flying dog out of uh Maryland. Um, mm -hmm. If you're familiar with Ralph Steadman, I'm sure you know the uh, illustrator oh, yeah. of Fear and Loathing and, um, you know, 
great ink uh, ink brush. yeah yeah splattery Watercolor, cool yeah. stuff and i remember seeing um what's the command for that you okay um I remember seeing his work on a uh, on a beer and just being like holy smokes like this is so cool and um what are you doing stop it um like a, like this is like a real you know serious artist and he's you know you know making these beer can designs and it's just so cool because everyone like like i said earlier you, when you have a beer like everyone everyone has to see this drawing now you know what i mean it's like you're sh mm -hmm. sh like shoving this like this amazing illustration into like everybody's face and it's just like a cool way to um you know showcase art and um that's when i was like i was like oh man i can do like beer can designs that would be awesome and I got into it. Conveniently, my, uh, you know, friends were making a brewery and they needed artwork. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> and good uh, positioning there. Yeah. And it, I mean, as you know, we're pretty, as illustrators, pretty lucky that the craft beer industry took off the mm -hmm. way it did. Because, you know, um, it's just so many uh, job opportunities for artwork. And it's yeah. fun, and the industry definitely seems to uh, support art and seek out, um, you know, unique artists for their cans. You know, we went from like, I feel like beer can design up until the past, you know, ten or fifteen years was pretty, pretty. Uh, it's kind of all look the same. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, just Budweiser esque. You know, I don't know, but definitely pretty convenient yeah i remember uh paps blue ribbon pbr um David, yeah. i don't know if they're still doing it but they were running a contest annual contest um, yeah, the artist series or whatever yeah for illustrators to contribute art and uh you if you won or came to the top whatever you'd get your art on the label yeah but i think there's always been yeah there's it's i i do love that the, the connection because mm -hmm. you've you know craft beers it's just like one of those things where a lot of those guys doing that stuff are usually in the more creative side or the you know independent they're, they're running their own independent business and so there's definitely a connection there especially with illustrators because most illustrators are independent contractors or freelance artists yeah um, definitely a connection there yeah it's pretty awesome and it's i, I mean i just love going into a, a beer store when they have like a nice selection and just looking at the labels not even buying anything because there's so yeah. much there's so much to <laughs> look so at so much there's so it's much. crazy um the guy i bought my first cintiq from was like eight years ago or something he uh he was outside of san francisco i can't remember where uh, what city but he i went over to his house to buy you know get get it it was like He's selling it for like really cheap almost like unused he's like oh, i tried to get into it and i go down in the studio and i'm like oh i was like you really must love like was it blue moon the beer uh-huh and he's like oh no i do the packaging for those oh that's <laughs> awesome like, and he does everything scratch board um and he was trying to do it digitally and like trying to get into it and he's like i can't <laughs> it's like yeah i just can't replicate it i mean he's an older guy yeah um but it was really cool, you know, same thing where it's like, I feel like a big company like that, it just, you kind of forget that like, it's just, there's this one dude somewhere kicking ass, making, you know, some rad art for a yeah. big company. It's um, so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Ballast Point from San Diego. They yeah. Have oh yeah. Some amazing. Point, yeah. They're, those are all paintings like oil oil or acrylic paintings that mm -hmm. he, that their artist is awesome obviously a huge inspiration for yeah, all these points great yeah um but yeah just drawing this just brain brains are so hard to freaking draw oh my gosh I'm, it's it's like funny the I'm, third brain and i'm getting better i was it's because there's they're so they're weird. very organic and you so it's stupid. like it's like drawing uh braids Yes, another exactly. very like your brain is just like ah, I know how this works, but I can't. Yeah, it it's like is camera. it all is like is it all connected or but it's not right. It's so it's strange. Wild. That's a very weird. Like there are like yeah, the there sausage. are these paths. There is yeah. a maze. There, but there is a pattern to the madness. Come back, the yeah. And That's then like, wild. 
I don't know, something like when I'm drawing it sometimes, I'm like, I'm just drawing a brain using my brain to try and, <laughs> like, like, this is just so strange. Yeah, brains are. Brains Imagine are the first person to like see a brain. Like, wait, what? Oh That's gosh. what's in our head? <laughs> yeah, they're like, hmm, this is. This, this doesn't seem like it should be here. We should yeah. take this out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pull it out through the nose, like, guys. Trying to, like what doctors? Yeah, like, the, the Egyptians were like, like, we got to take it out, dude. Just yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, suck it out. Yeah, this thing's weird. This weird tumors in here. Uh, gods so are not going to like this. <laughs> Have you ever um, heard of the Mutter Museum or the Mütter Museum in Philadelphia? No. It's a... Uh, like what you were talking about earlier where they like kind of cast like the nervous system with plastic and stuff like that they have, yeah they just say it's all like not necessarily oddities but like science like medical um stuff like uh like weird conjoined twin skeletons and stuff like mm -hmm. that it's like kind of gross but like really interesting um super cool museum that i grew up going to and uh yeah they have all kind they have like you know different like brains. weird scientific anomalies and... exactly definitely yeah. they have this one wall it's everything that's terrible that's ever happened to an eyeball and it's like all these like like with like toothpicks stuck in them and it's like who decided that we needed to see this <laughs> yeah someone out there yeah but it is it's awesome yeah so yeah this is the brain uh, so now is this is brain gonna, be, gonna have a little is it gonna have a little tongue lapping up the i i that's a great a little, little sphere here <laughs> um i was trying to get the, the motion here in the beer that's inside the head like yeah. it's kind of rippling out as he like sips it right, so this right. is this is gonna be a butterfly brain so oh, nice. he's gonna have little butterfly wings so nice connect these up here Let's get, a, get some wings to work out here. This is a crazy picture that I took years ago. We got we got a, about four minutes left, just so you know, before we okay. start wrapping it up. I can, okay. Oh, there we go. But yeah, this is a, look at these butterflies, like eating a fish. It's so strange. That's so cool. It's like, what are you guys doing? Are you underwater? <laughs> so, butterfly wings hard to get the perspective right sometimes uh, open that up a little more that's that's a cool cool addition yeah like i think i'm gonna try i might turn the butterfly brain into like my logo for my yeah, like, a, personal like artwork there you go i just say i'm gonna lasso this and Make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, um, Umicorn <laughs> saying brains kind of look like intestines as well. Yeah, which like they do, exactly. Which is bizarre. It's so strange. Like I wonder, could you like untangle it and like stretch it out in theory? Like, is it actually like that? Or? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, that is not how that works. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's a tube, but that's. Yeah, butterflies. Carnivorous little bastards. I know, they're so strange. Who knew? And I'm slowly been getting the pattern down to butterfly wings. So I see a grid, a grid right here. Did you just turn off the white background behind it? Or is there I don't know why. What just happened? Um, that's just the I guess that's the nothingness. Is that what are that you is? just yeah, I was gonna say, are you just working on an open open layer basically? Because you know, I'm yeah. like I usually have like a, a white paper or something, but do you usually like kind of working with a grid? Um, not really, no. Um, I usually keep, I like to keep like a nice yellow. Um, oh, okay. Uh, just to see it pop. Um, so we'll turn off this background image. Let's just, uh, we don't have that much time. I'll just yeah, show us real quick. bring it all up. Yeah. This is a man that's dedicated. He's doing this drawing twice for you folks. <laughs> and the butters. Ooh. 
Woo, look at us. Butterfly wings. So, yeah. It's a very this nice addition. Yeah, I like it. Oh, yeah, it's great. So, yeah, this is what we've got done so far. Very cool. And then finish the uh, finish the legs up here today um, after I leave you guys and uh, start coloring it for you. And then we can start talking about that tomorrow and get into all that. that. Very cool. So, yeah, we got Bobby Rivers coming in from South Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Um, we're wrapping up day one here. Uh, working in Photoshop is our drawing and painting stream on Adobe Live. Um, working on a beer label. Uh, it's very cool. Just kind of working on the inks today, getting all those uh, mapped out. Bobby's going to go ahead and... Uh... Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I guess we have a, we have like a few more minutes before we need okay. to wrap up. I was like, <laughs> I was rushing into it, but keep, so keep working. We got like four more minutes, okay. um, but this has been very, uh, very cool. And it's like I said, you know, it's like there's every process is different, is different. And mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to see how people get to the end. You don't know. You always kind of, you know, you see so much art on the internet where it's like, this is my finished product. Yeah. And which is great. But it's always great to kind of see, it's, yeah, see it's, people working through it, and I love seeing. It's, the it's also good to artists. see people fail a little bit, you know. <laughs> like, Definitely, yeah. Not always, you know. Nothing's perfect. It's like you kind of have to work things out. Yeah, especially like right now, I'm trying to decide how to make him grow out of the earth. I think I'm gonna try maybe make this like more mossy, his mm -hmm. foot. You know what I mean? Like have this kind of growing up, maybe like have some rock kind of like my reference images oh very cool but, but yeah I want. yeah were you gonna do the leg is more of like a tree yeah i think or, that's the idea yeah. and then have it kind of start blooming up around here somewhere at the joint and start turning into this the flowers mm -hmm. um but we'll see too i also i can't really decide if i want to make the whole skeleton of flowers or have him, you know, start down here as the tree. Kind of like transitioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do some like the sycamore style birchy stuff up here. Yeah, I think, I mean, I like that. I like having that kind of like uh, transition, the variety, like a little bit of the yeah. uh, texture variety. And they can, you know, these little like uh, pieces of bark flake off and then they can start kind of blowing around in the wind with all of this. Um, it all kind of blends on. together too. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of all. I'm also thinking um, of putting some, some flames on these, this guitar here. It's just so everyone knows he's shredding, you know, that's, that's a bad one. That's something like that. Nice. Is this impromptu flame work? Yeah. Look at that. This is what happens folks. How long you been, how long you been drawing? Me? Yeah. Uh, pretty, basically my whole life. Um, See, whole life, people. Yeah. And then you can do uh, flames like this. <laughs> I uh, I started doing comics for the newspaper when I was um, in elementary school. Nice. Mr. Moose and Mr. Platypus. And uh, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty fun. It's a good and, combo. Yeah. yeah. And then um, in middle school, I moved to Lancaster, PA, and started doing... Uh, comics for the Lancaster New Era newspaper. And oh, then um, just kind of faded out. Now I just draw, I draw comics for fun. Um, just, you know, not for anyone or it's not published anywhere. It'd be cool to one day get back in like the newspaper somewhere. Just like locally, I think it would be fun. Oh yeah. It's, there's some cool stuff in the papers. It's hard, it's like not as popular now, right? But I yeah, like I don't see them. I mean, in our local papers, I don't see any comics. Got to self-publish, man. I know. Do some We're zines. Like, some zine Bring the zines, zines back. Zine. Just start dropping them off at people's front doors. Yeah. Like, dropping them off at bars. <laughs> here's here's your zine. Maybe I was thinking maybe some like smoke coming out. I don't know. From the head? Maybe the or... eyes and like the eye sockets and the mouth maybe. Could, you could it could be there's it's endless it's possibilities like, yeah you always you gotta like find the balance of like yeah you want the detail but you don't want to get so busy that it 
starts messing with the composition uh-huh it would look good i mean I, it could could work yeah the when i my drawing process is like very organic like as as i'm going it kind of starts developing like i have this vague idea of what i want to do and it it's in my head and it doesn't always look exactly the same yeah. as when i'm done all right well it is now 11:24, and it is time finally to wrap up i pulled pulled the trigger a little earlier no um, but yeah again bobby rivers thank you so much for being with us today this is day one it's been awesome uh we're gonna finish up the beer label tomorrow day two it's gonna be the same time 9 30 a.m pacific standard time so please come join us tomorrow um and yeah, we're going to have part two. Uh, stick around for the Creative Encore of Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Andrew Hawkrattle. Uh, it's immediately followed by web design with creative director Alison Nguyen. Um, and she's going to design landing pages for her design podcast using Adobe XD. So thank you so much, Bobby. We yeah, will man, thank you, see Chris. you tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, let's keep crushing it. It'll be fun. Heck yeah, man. All right. And All thanks right. everybody in the chat. It was great having everybody. See you tomorrow. All right. See ya.